welcome to Making India a New Deal for Defence. This week we take a look at a relatively young company, but one that has effected a massive transformation. Over the last 10 years, Karnataka-based Equus Aerospace has moved from being just a supplier of automotive components to one of the go-to aerospace structure manufacturers for giants like Airbus and Boeing. CNBC TV 18's Purnima Murli travelled to Karnataka's Belagavi district to get a first-hand look at the company's capabilities in the aerospace and defence sectors. This facility of Acus Aerospace is not old. When Arvind Meligri co-founded this company in 1997, it was an engineering services company focused on the power generation space. It boasted annual revenues of $20 million and went by the name of Quest Global. And it might have continued in that vein if energy trading giant Enron had not collapsed in 2002. The collapse saw most of the company's contracts being cancelled and forced the founders to look at new areas. I co-founded Quest with uh, my partner Ajit Prabhu mm -hmm. and uh, as an engineering service provider to initially to uh, power generation. Later we went into aerospace and uh, started working with customers like Airbus and um, various other tier ones. And uh, that opened up a uh, thought process of, hey, we're doing design work here. We asked customers, hey, can we do manufacturing to you? At that time, India was just opening up through the defense, through the commercial offsets, had opened up the commercial aerospace sector for India, and we were one of one of our kind, you know, setting manufacturing facility in India at that time. So, and and in 2006, 2007, we reevaluated a whole strategy of how we should be able to take this opportunity, the way engineering services we took this opportunity to scale, as similar to services model actually. So when we looked at it, we knew we needed to have a, a platform and ecosystem to do it. This new platform and ecosystem became a reality a year later when the company entered into a joint venture with Magellan Aerospace to set up Aerospace Processing India. The initial contracts were centered around providing surface treatment for global players like Boeing and an order from Belgium-based aerospace company Fabka to manufacture metallic parts and assembly work for the Airbus 380 program. In 2009, backed by various successes and an expanding order book, the company began operations at an SEZ in Karnataka's Belgavi district, nearly 500 kilometers from Bengaluru. I am at Acres Aerospace Manufacturing Facility at Belagavi in Karnataka. Spread over 250 acres, this 10-year-old company makes precision components and aerospace assemblies for top tier 1 players and OEMs including Airbus, Boeing and Utahs. Today, this is India's largest integrated aerospace facility. A facility that provides components for major aerospace players. A facility that has caught the attention of Defence Minister Manohar Parikar. I used to travel very often in car from Belgaum to Kolhapur, Karar, Pune area. And I have never seen any facility here about uh, maybe 2009 also. Possibly it was just beginning at that time and I have not seen it. So when he told me such and such and showed me the photograph, sent me the photograph, I was wondering what exactly has gone, should I say it wrong or right? Right, I think things are going quite right for India altogether. Airbus from our historical journey from Quest, uh, where we are engineering services provider for them, and we, we when we presented our idea uh, of, of setting up manufacturing, and especially like a dedicated facility, uh, they were open for that, but they were apprehensive about it. You know, they they let us do things and ask us to demonstrate what we can do on the floor and what we can deliver to them, where we can meet the quality requirements, on-time performance. And over the years, we have done that. Since 2009, we started journey with Airbus, and uh, it was a very small order, right? just less, less than a half a million dollar order what we received. And today, we, you know, we are doing more than $10 million with Airbus. Today, Acus is one of Airbus's top suppliers, raking in over $12 million a year from the global giant alone. With Quest being rechristened Acus in 2014, the two have now taken their relationship to the next level. We just launched a manufacturing facility dedicated for Airbus. Right. It's going to take $75 million per year revenue. 
in next five years. So this kind of evolution is a, is a very uh, systematic you know, step up process. This factory is a manufacturing base for aerospace major Airbus. This plant has a capacity to house 150 machines and will generate 1000 jobs over the next five years. The company will invest a total of about 50 million dollars to manufacture several components for all the Airbus programs. What this means is that every time an Airbus aircraft takes off, Akut has had a role to play. And that is something Airbus is most comfortable with. Arvind actually came to visit us about 10 years ago, it's nearly a decade, uh, in Toulouse in France. And uh, we were discussing, uh, you know, about his vision, you know, what his vision was, his entrepreneurial vision for setting up a special economic zone in aerospace. And at that time, as you know, you know, we only had big players like HL and others, and private sector companies were just coming in. Either they were coming in from automotive industry, or they were coming in from IT industry on engineering front. But somebody really starting to say that I want to do something in machining and then want to grow a special economic zone. We, we had our own uh, you know, uh, um, uh, concerns about it and saying how can you pull it off, you know. But there he is, you know, he has done a great job in the last 10 years to make this happen. So that way the journey started 10 years ago, 2009, they started the facility and then afterwards the metal cut and now we have, you know, such a beautiful, as he said, which really goes towards the vision of what our Prime Minister wants in terms of Make in India and this is definitely an, uh, an aerospace Make in India example. But Airbus is not alone in building fruitful long-term relationships with Acres. The company's client list now boasts of names like Baker Hughes, Halliburton, Bosch, Danaher and Utah. Utah has been in the country which was as a good rich back in uh, since 90 when our earliest guys back in 95 96 they came in into the country and they established a manufacturing facility here mostly to do the evacuation shoots and later they started doing assembly facilities they were looking for suppliers within india to supply the components and we came and basically started asking them to use us you know we'll be able to provide you and we started with a simple one package of a million dollar uh, today we are, we are supply over 12 million dollar today to utas and uh, through, through the recent acquisition we did in the uh, US, uh, we just added Utah as a customer in US also. So we are bringing an additional 5-6 million dollars per year. Uh, if you really look at it, we have a dedicated facility for aerostructures, dedicated facility for uh, aerosystems because the capabilities are different. ACUS also manufactures defense components for the HAL, gas turbine research establishment and the DRDO. The company currently manufactures over 250 components for the light combat aircraft program. The company continues to bet big on the defense offsets which are opening up the country. Our journey with uh, Indian defense predominantly started two years back and our idea was look you know we believe the requirements of within Indian defense can be met with our spare capacity tell you the truth because we have a million hours of capacity you know we can easily have 100,000 200,000 hours available for India defense requirements right now. So we can support the defense requirement within that because the requirements are not that huge. There may be a lot of different parts but the volumes are low. So LCA has been a one focus area for us and we will continue to support that program and also another area has been GTRE where we have been actively working with them to identify the forgings which they are currently sourcing globally which can be done in our new facility squad here which is a joint venture with Auburn Duval which is a French partner and is one of the very well known uh, capab uh, capability holder in the in the world on the forging side. So we are working with various DRDO labs and uh, also uh, Hyderabad based uh, uh, division of the DRDO we are working with them. So we, we are cutting across various. So we are very young in, in the defense but we believe we will you know, we'll be pretty established fairly, fairly soon. In aerospace, ACUS has also signed a joint venture with Set Forge and Aubert and Duval to set up a forging division at its Belgavi facility. This is India's largest hydraulic press dedicated to the aerospace and defense sectors and supports major OEMs by supplying them aerostructural parts, landing gear and brake system components. This is a forging facility. The company had recently bagged an order from gas turbine research establishment to manufacture forgings for gas turbine engines. Once imported, these forgings will now be made in India. For Acres, diversification is not just a passing fancy. The company has ventured into the oil and gas vertical by signing a long-term agreement with one of the world's largest oil field services company, Baker Hughes, and even supplies IT precision engineering products. 
Mercedes aims to end this financial year with revenues of $45 million. That's double the $22.5 million clock last year when it turned profitable. Add to that the fact that it's bagged large orders from various tier 1 companies. Acus is now confident it can grow at a CAGR of 50% this year. We are growing at a CAGR 50% uh, plus currently and uh, last year we did about 22 and $22.5 million revenue uh, and this year we do uh, actually $45 million revenue. This year growth has been much higher than historically. Uh, aerospace has been an extremely good growth year for us this year. So, and uh, you know, we, we continue, we expect to grow in this fashion because opportunity is so large. And globally, if you really look at it, uh, aerospace manufacturing is about $100 billion opportunity. And uh, today, India exports about $250 billion per year, which is you know, and I expect it to go to about a billion dollar by 2020, which is still a 1% of global opportunity. Apart from an order book of $250 million over a five-year period, Acus' optimism about the future also stems from the fact that it sees high visibility in overseas markets and expects a big boost from a two-fold growth in exports in the coming years. Acquisitions will play a big role in this aggressive growth forecast. Acus made its first acquisition this year by buying US-based TNK machine for $10 million. This will help it make components and systems for companies like Spirit Aero Systems and Triumph Group, which supply large systems to global giants like Boeing. Acus also manufactures defense components for the HAL, gas turbine research establishment and the DRDO. The company currently manufactures over 250 components for the light combat aircraft program. The company continues to bet big on the defense offsets which are opening up in the country. Targets are clear. Acus wants to become a $300 million company by 2020. A strong presence back home, a growing presence in the key North American and European markets and an ever-expanding list of partnerships and acquisitions will give it a strong position that it needs in the global aerospace and defense sectors to achieve these targets. The company is aiming for a 5% market share in the machining segment which it claims is its primary focus. But it also faces a myriad of challenges as it embarks on this journey. Challenges that range from a tough policy environment to troubles in financing to an often hostile tax regime. But more on all of that in just a bit right here on Making India a New Deal for Defence. Welcome back. You're watching Make in India a New Deal for Defence. I'm Shireen Bhan. The company we're focusing on this week is Equus Aerospace, a 10-year-old Karnataka-based supplier of automotive components which has today become one of the go-to aerospace structure manufacturers for giants like Airbus and Boeing. While it's increasing its share in the commercial space, it is only a few orders from the defence space. And that is the one area it wants to improve upon. But Equus says this is easier said than done. CNBC TV 18's Purnima Morley finds out why. Ivan Miliguri co-founded Acus in 1997 and has today carved out a niche for the company in the global aerospace engineering playing field. While this expertise has opened the doors to defence manufacturing, the company's foray into this arena has not been accompanied by great fanfare or instant success. But there is hope that this will take a turn for the better soon. The Defence Minister's recent changes to India's defence procurement policy are aimed at creating a bold new world where defence manufacturing is concerned. The make in India has a lot of uh, opportunity in the normal industry. But the biggest chunk can come from defence. We have been importing quite a bit of our requirement needs from various foreign countries and uh, there is a distinct possibility of procurement of at least 8 to 10 billion dollars worth product in India itself per year over the next 5 to 10 years. MSMEs like Acus say these simpler procedures are a good start. They hope more clarifications and tweaks will come, making the existing rigid business environment a lot easier to work in. Some of the procurement cycles are very long. You know, MMRC started in 2005-2006 and uh, no resolution happened for 5, 6, 7 years. And uh, this government came in and made some changes quickly to make some decisions. That has helped them to you know, bring some kind of a decision-making process. But there is a lot of effort that has to go in, in making quick decisions. The biggest 
excitement for Aegis comes from the Defence Minister's assurance that defence offset procurement will increase from the current $29 billion to $35 billion. When it came to the defence offset, there were a lot of, uh, <coughs> a lot of things were uh, considered direct offset, clarification was not there. They brought in services, they took away services, you know, in the, in the offsets and the manufacturing side also, uh, what can be considered as dual use were not permitted. You know, if, if we could use the same thing for commercial and also military, they would not permit them sometimes. So it became challenging and, and recent clarifications have helped us to say, hey, what is offset and also on top of the industrial uh, licensing requirements has been another issue. It was a great amount of confusion early on in the industry on who needs industrial license, who doesn't need industrial you know, this government came and very much clarified and delisted several products which, you know, parts and components which we are making. Now the Defence Minister may have sought a year's time to bring in effective changes to boost defence manufacturing and procurement in line with the Make in India program, but ACUS is already working on getting ready to hit the ground running. This is high precision, high IP content manufacturing and we believe we can use the manufacturing as services you know, to provide to global requirements and we are actually scratching the surface in that pro in, the, in that process however acus admits that msmes do not yet have the capacity to take full advantage of the offshore orders the msmes i don't think they are you know they have right now ready to take that on because as i said you know technology challenges and the working capital challenges and the investment capital challenges all these elements are there there needs to be a comprehensive look at where this offset are going to be met and it, uh, if you don't meet these offsets, the challenges is also from the, the buyer side, which is like uh, Airbus and Boeing. These people will have challenges in delivering those offsets. It's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. So we really need to make the things easier to support from, the, from supporting MSMEs, either to some technology fund or you know uh, investment vehicles, uh, and also at the same time to help them to support the customers to meet these offsets. That's not to say that the current environment is very restrictive. The government has already relaxed the FDI policy and ACUS sees this as a big advantage. That's because higher levels of FDI in the aerospace and defence sectors will help boost volume. ACUS is already the first defence company to receive an approval from the Foreign Investment Promotion Board to increase overseas funding in its Indian to 40% of equity. I think current, taking to 49%, most of the requirement is covered. You know, but if there are exceptions, the government has given them an option. I don't think any necessity to make changes, but I believe this should be sufficient for convince anybody to. Intent of the government is not to, you know, not to take their IP away, but also use that. But they also use India to make, make an India side of it. But in areas of taxation, the company is facing severe headwinds. Minimum alternate tax on special economic zones, for instance, is a sore point. They brought in a CZ rule in 2006-2007 and uh, it had a, no MAT, minimum alternate tax, you know, no dividend tax for the investors. But all those were reversed within two years in the, in the, in the UPA2. That doesn't make, give any kind of benefit to having a special economic zone uh, for the investors. But still, I believe there is enough ease of doing business in special economic zone for import-export perspective. I believe that should be changed. That should be reversed. At least match should be taken out for manufacturing. You are doing make in India. You are trying to export in defense side. And, and, and here you are putting a cash uh, constraints on the businesses. I can understand the mature businesses in the services and other sector can afford to do this. But if you are, when you have large working capital cycles in, in defense manufacturing, mm -hmm. you cannot burden them with minimum return tax, in my view. Taxation aside, ACUS feels the biggest challenge for growth for MSMEs in general and itself in particular is access to technology and the rising cost of capital. The MSMEs are a, a, you know, bread and butter for this industry. If Today, if you look at it, most of the defense production happens through the MSMEs. Very large, very few large players are there. Uh, so their biggest struggle is uh, capital and cost of capital and sometimes technology also. Mm -hmm. And uh, without those uh, without the ability to get the cost of capital lower, they will not be able to invest mm. and without the cost of, you know, without the technology, they will not be able to scale. So those two things are very important for them to support. So policy changes should create a most probably investment vehicle in my view, uh, which can help MSMEs. It is hopes the government will swoop in with friendly policies, especially those that will create an environment of easier access to cheaper funds. 
company has already proven its mettle when it recovered spectacularly after the collapse of Enron by winning key clients and cornering a big export market and a more stable environment will see it scaling higher peaks. While it waits for the government to get its policies in place, Equus is working on its 2020 strategy, a strategy that will make it one of the largest suppliers of critical systems to global aerospace players. Now, this involves an investment of 600 odd crore rupees, which will go towards expanding the manufacturing facilities, bringing in better technologies, and digging a deeper foundation with existing customers. That is then all we have for you on this episode of Making India a New Deal for Defence. As always, send us your feedback and your suggestions. We like hearing from you. From all of us here on the team, goodbye and many thanks for watching.